Newton put forward his laws of motion many centuries ago. The laws are quite simple and intuitive, but how our body initiates and controls its movements are complex and multi-layered. On that note, let us look at how voluntary muscle movement is controlled by something known as the pyramidal tract. Information via nerve impulses is constantly being transmitted two-way between the brain and the rest of the body via long bundles of neurons known as tracts. The sensory impulses are hikers moving up a trail to reach the peak of a hill and coming back down as motor impulses through another path to reach the foothills. The tracts carrying information about sensations like pain and temperature to the brain are ascending tracts. The ones that carry impulses from the brain to the other parts of the body are called descending tracts. One such tract is the pyramidal tract which we are going to discuss now. The pyramidal tract consists of two sets of fibers, corticospinal and corticobulbar. They differ only in the areas that they terminate in and supply. Both fibers originate from several areas in the cerebral cortex like the primary motor cortex about 30%, supplementary motor area and the pre-motor cortex 30%, the somatosensory cortex, parietal lobe and cingulate gyrus supplies the rest. They pass through the corona radiata into the genome and anterior 2 by 3rds of the posterior limb of the internal capsule from where they descend downwards into the middle 1 by 3rd of cerebral peduncles. The tract continues down the anterior aspect of the pons and into the medulla where the fibers create visible prominences called the pyramids on its anterior surface. Corticobulbar fibers synapse with their lower motor neurons within different parts of the brainstem, namely with the motor nuclei of cranial nerves. They go on to give bilateral supply to the muscles of the face, head and neck with unilateral supply to some of the lower facial muscles. In contrast, corticospinal fibers supply the muscles of the trunk, abdomen and limbs and hence continue down below the brainstem into the spinal cord to reach their lower motor neurons. Below the pyramids, approximately 80% of the corticospinal fibers cross over to the other side of the brainstem in what is called the pyramidal decussation. The fibers that have decussated form the lateral corticospinal tract and out of that many go through the interneurons to terminate in the anterior horn cells and very few terminate directly. The remaining uncrossed fibers continue down as the anterior or ventral corticospinal tract. However, most of the axons of the anterior corticospinal tract tend to cross over to the opposite side in the spinal cord just before they synapse with lower motor neurons. They are mainly concerned with bilateral postural movements. The pyramidal tracts have many functions, mainly controlling voluntary movements of muscles. Corticobulbar fibers control movements of most muscles in the head and neck. Corticospinal controls movements of the rest of the body. Because of the crossing over of corticospinal fibers in the medulla, muscles are supplied by the side of the brain opposite to that of the muscle. The fibers of the two different branches of the corticospinal tract principally stimulate activity in different types of muscle. Lateral corticospinal tract primarily controls the movement of distal muscles in the limbs and plays a role in skilled voluntary movements. Anterior corticospinal tract is involved with posture and provides motor supply bilaterally to the muscles of the trunk and proximal muscles in the limbs. Approximately, out of all the corticospinal fibers, 20% terminate at thoracic levels, 25% at lumbosacral levels, and 55% at cervical levels. The representation of the various body parts in the motor cortex can be learned through the motor homunculus. The functions of the pyramidal tracts are better understood by looking at case studies of a disorder known as hemiplegia. is the main disorder arising due to damage to the pyramidal tracts. It can either be contralateral or ipsilateral. Causes can be vascular disease, accidents, disc prolapse or congenital defects. The lesion of the corticospinal tract at the internal capsule is the most common cause for hemiplegia. Fibers coming from different parts of the cortex pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule. 
Any disease of the internal capsule results in complete interruption of the corticospinal fibers. This leads to paralysis of the opposite half of the body, which is known as contralateral hemiplegia. Interruption of blood flow in the lenticular striate branches of the middle cerebral artery is a main cause for lesions of internal capsule. It can be caused due to predisposed risk factors like diabetes, hypertension. Causes of upper motor neuron lesion include hemiparesis, spasticity, which is the increased discharge of motor neurons and increased excitability of motor neuron pool. No muscle atrophy, since lower motor neurons are intact. Exaggerated deep tendon reflexes. Loss of superficial reflexes. Positive Papinski sign. <laughs>